Hello. Last time we talked about a little music theory for people who don't read music or don't really like to read music. Um, here's a continuation. Uh, this will be our second session on that. Last time we looked at the key of C major and we saw that all the natural notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we started and ended on C. We had no sharps, no flats, and we had the key of C major. Well, the relative key, uh, which utilizes the same notes, is the key of A natural minor. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. No sharps, no flats, just like C major. Difference here is we're starting and ending on A. That's sometimes used in folk music uh, and other kinds of music, but along the way, over the centuries, musicians uh, found that it didn't have a strong resolution to that, back to the A. So the leading tone, you know, like in a major scale, you would have, it leads you right into it. It has that sound of expectation. So what they did to the A natural minor was they sharped the seventh note. So rather than play the G as we did in A natural minor and C major, they play G sharp. Okay? When you do that and you sharp the G, that's called A harmonic minor. Um, the reason it's called A harmonic minor is because that's generally has been over the years the key that's used to uh, develop chords for the key of A minor, you know, more so than the key of A natural minor. So if we look at what the chords are in A harmonic minor, where we're sharpening that seventh note, we're sharpening the G, well, you know, that's going to actually change a few of the chords. It's going to change the chord that's built on the third in the key of A minor, which would be a C note. It's going to change the chord that's built on E, and it's going to also change the chord that's built on this new sharped note, the G sharp. So, um, A minor is still the same. The one chord, A minor, B diminished, which again, if you remember from last time, diminished is a minor third with a minor third stock, stacked on top. Now the next thing we have is going to be our first chord that's going to be altered to a different chord because of that G sharp. We have C, E, G sharp right here. So C, E, G sharp, C, E, G sharp, C, E, G sharp. Okay, what that is, I don't think we mentioned last time. When you have a major third, that's what we're dealing with now, with another major third stacked on top, it's called an augmented chord. So, you know, down here, regular cowboy C major, if you bar with the first finger, the second and third strings. So, I did that once for somebody and he went, oh, darling, Beatles, Abbey Road. Okay, so, I don't know if that's the key, but it's that kind of sound. It's also in uh, Stormy Monday. The Allman Brothers started off, I think, with somewhere over here, augmented. Okay, so review again. A harmonic minor. We have B, uh, A minor, B diminished, C augmented, D minor. This chord is also different because of the G-sharp. What happens here is we have E to G-sharp is a major third, and then above that we have G-sharp to B, which is a minor third, and that's going to give us E major. Now what's weird here is that the very next chord is up a half step, and it's F major. After the F major, we have G-sharp diminished. And as you know, have a diminished chord, you can move it up in minor thirds. One, two, three. Jump up three frets from where you are. And then we resolve it to A minor. Okay, that's harmonizing the uh, A harmonic minor scale with three note chords, triads. What would happen if we added in that fourth note to give you kind of more exotic, prettier sounds? Um, so if we took the same A harmonic minor, and if we harmonize the scale without going into too much detail right now, with four notes instead of three, so each chord is going to consist of four notes, here's what you wind up with. It's going to be A minor with a major seven, a weird chord. It's actually the second chord in, it's right here. Of course, 
they added a B on the first string, but we don't need that. It's going to be, barring the first three strings, I've got the middle finger on the uh, fourth string, sixth fret. Throwing in the open A too. Strange chord. Another way to play it would be. So you can hear it's kind of a chord that's waiting for something else to happen. Okay, but getting back to the four note harmonized chords um, in A harmonic minor. First one is the A minor with a major seven. Second one is B minor seven flat five. Play it there. Next one is C major seven with a sharp five. Next one is D minor seven. Next one is E seven. And then F major seven. So if you recall, a few moments ago, when we did the triads, when we built the three note chords, we just simply had E major followed by F major. I like this better. It's going from E7, because of that G sharp, to F major 7, in the four note versions. And then we're back to G sharp diminished. And back to A minor. Okay, so. We looked at A, natural minor, which is really the same as C major. All of the notes are the same and all of the chords are the same. They're all natural notes. We looked at the idea of raising that leading tone, raising the G, the seventh note, up to G sharp for A harmonic minor. Okay. Um, this is a little thing I like a lot. Um, when you do the four note harmonization, if you do an arpeggio on E7, and then an arpeggio on F major 7, I just like the way that sounds. So you could actually do a song along those lines if you had E7 down here. Seven, back to E7. I don't know, it's just something about the exotic sound of those two chords. Uh, they're a fret away from each other. Bach used uh, harmonic minor a lot. Somewhere I had stumbled upon this. Um, I think it's in a two-part invention. Something like that. Okay. Um, so, something I like to practice is I like to practice the chords in A harmonic minor. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to play the triads except when I get to the E and the F um, rather than just play major, which is okay. I mean, that's what you get with the plain three note chords. What I do is I actually play the triads, and then when I get to the E and the F, I, I substitute the E7 to the F major 7. Just to let you hear how that sounds and what it looks like, we have A minor still. We have B diminished. We have C augmented. I like this a lot. That's with the sharp five, sharp G. Now we have uh, D minor seven. And um, let, me, let me play that back again because I'm switching here and I'm, I'm getting confused. Triads, A harmonic minor. We have A minor, E diminished, C augmented, D minor. Here's where I substitute in the two chords from the four note versions because I just like how they sound. And then G sharp diminished. Okay, so just walking through the uh, 
A natural minor, A harmonic minor. Something that was developed based on a third A minor scale is the A melodic minor. The A melodic minor is what you do is you sharp two notes. You sharp not only the seventh, but you sharp the sixth. One, two, three, four, five. Classical theory, if you took classical uh, classes, they define the A melodic minor as when you're ascending the scale, sharp the sixth and seventh degrees, but when you're descending the scale, coming down, you naturalize both of them, which is kind of strange. So I won't even try to play it because I don't use it. I'm not used to it. But what jazz composers and jazz musicians did was they developed something called the jazz minor, which is simply, in this case, the A melodic minor regardless of going up or coming down or staying on a note or whatever, it's always the same notes. So the way to do that would be this. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C, F sharp, G sharp, A. I think probably the one I like the best is the harmonic minor. Um, anyway, so all of these can be said to be relative minors to the key of C major. A natural minor, A harmonic, and A melodic minor. Uh, so again, I'll show you what I do when I'm practicing um, in A minor. I practice the arpeggios. It's A minor. B diminished. C augmented. D minor. E7 now, so I'm substituting in a four note chord. F major 7. G sharp diminished. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Um, this is just a little series I'm doing for people who aren't big on reading music, who see the value in music theory, this tremendous value in music theory. I was talking to a friend recently, and uh, he was bringing up the point that some great musicians don't read music at all, uh, generally in the pop area. And my point was that, yeah, well, if you're kind of a, a born musician and kind of a genius or a brilliant composer, brilliant songwriter, what, what have you, brilliant improviser, and you never learned how to read music, that's all well and good because you're kind of a genius and you're, you know, uh, born to play music, a lot of talent. But if you're not, you're just an average person like us or like me, um, music theory is tremendously helpful. So it would be sad if you just never learned anything about theory out of hating to read music. So it's the whole idea behind this thing. If you like it, uh, just give me a like, consider subscribing, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Take care.